Hello everyone! Welcome back to this course analysis class. Today my focus is on the branch and scope of the discourse analysis. The scope of discourse analysis is not so so discourse analysis is not a discipline which exists on its own. It is influenced by other disciplines and influences them as well. So it is a way to it is a two-way process. And for this reason, discourse analysis examines both spoken and written text from all sort of different areas. It can be from the medical, legal advertising or so on. And from all sort of perspectives such as race, gender, power and so on. Um, so let me talk about the branches of the discourse analysis. We have first is multimodal discourse analysis. Second is the ethnography of speaking, and then third we have gender analysis, and the fourth, and so on. Actually, there are a lot, <laughs> so you can read uh, the books or the PDF version as well. First, I'm going to explain about the multimodal discourse analysis. It refers to the communication as a matter of combining multiple modes, and. The focus is not just on words, but on gestures, facial expressions, posture, proximics, gaze, object handling, spatial layout, time, and yeah, it's a timing. Jadi yang di analisis itu tidak hanya suara atau maaf, maksud saya tidak hanya teks kemudian diskursnya. Bisa dari facial expression, bisa dari gesture. For example, um, you analyze by having a critical discourse analysis or describing what it is like, what the gesture, kemudian what gesture is like, uh, the posture, and so on. So the second, uh, it's about the ethnography of speaking. It deals with the communication as a matter of cultural competence. The focus is on things like setting, participants, mood, and other kinds of behavioral rules. And also, um, it can be about what are some of the rules for complaining to, to, the, to the other person if it deals with a conversational thing. So, uh, for example, if you watch or listen to the presidential speech pidato president anda bisa analysis based on the setting of participants or the audiences or other kind of behavior rules in terms of the gestures as well and facial expression dari multimodal multi discourse analysis digabung dengan ethnography of speaking when the president speaks uh, a speech atau membawakan pidato tersebut and then yandra analysis it deals with the communications as using the generic conventions of a discourse community the focus is on the structure of the interaction the next part is pragmatics so ada sudah mendapatkan mata kuliah ini ya last semester you have pragmatics and then you have social linguistics before the pragmatics so pragmatics if you remember the theory of pragmatics it deals with the communication is doing things with words from sentence meaning versus speaker meaning jadi yang dimaksudkan di dalam kalimat itu dengan yang dimaksudkan oleh orangnya that's the pragmatics and we go on some disciplines of the discourse analysis so many scholars believe that a good linguistic description should go beyond the sentence and pointed to the fact that there are certain meanings on and aspects of the language that cannot be understood or embraced if a study is limited to the syntactic analysis or the sentence. So when we talk about the points or the branches of the uh, discourse analysis, there are functionalism or the function of the grammar. The second is the cognitive linguistics. And then the third is social linguistics. Social linguistics, you have learned this before this semester, yeah? and the pragmatics as well, and tech linguistics, text linguistics, and the discourse analysis. So, what do discourse analysts do? Jadi, apa sih sebenarnya dilakukan seorang analis 
uh, dalam menganalisis diskurs itu apa yang dilakukan. Jadi kelas Anda nanti akan berjalan seperti apa? How will your class run? Uh, discourse analyst investigate the use of language in context. Jadi menginvestigasi penggunaan bahasa di dalam konteks. Thus, they are interested in what speakers or writers do and not so much in the formal relationships among sentences or prepositions. And if we look at what discourse analysts do, we will find they explore matters such as turn taking in the telephone conversation. Jadi, mengamati atau menginvestigasi orang yang sedang bercakap-cakap dalam telepon. It can be about the language, power relations, Dialog in chat rooms bisa juga bercakapan di WhatsApp, for example, in terms of the text or the discourse of the archive. It can be also about the records, record yang sudah direkam ya, berarti berupa spoken activities. Uh, the conversation at dinner table atau orang yang sedang makan malam itu discourse-nya bagaimana? Or the scripts or given television program. Uh, misalkan pembawa membacakan sebuah berita ada orang yang membacakan news presenter presents the news kemudian ada skripnya di bawahnya itu bisa dianalisis or usually the film with the subtitles you can analyze the discourse of the subtitles atau the discourse of the politicians itu bisa juga uh, dari seseorang yang berkecimpung dalam dunia politics Another one is the study of racism through the use of the discourse. Kemudian, how power relations and sexism are manifested in the conversation. Bisa, kalau misalkan analisisnya berdasarkan gender, berarti it's between men and women. Yeah. The characteristic of the discourse. Uh, you can also analyze the opening and the closing of the speech. Between different types of the conversation, dari yang berbeda, kalau openingnya news presenter itu, what is it like? Kalau openingnya presidential speech, what is it like? Kemudian, you can also analyze the structure, yeah, the grammar as well. Kemudian, um, the strategies, the spoken strategies used by the speaker or writer. Strategi apa yang digunakan untuk uh, mempromosikan something, for example. The use of the linguistic politeness and so on. There are a lot. That's it. The explanation about the branch and the scope of the discourse analysis. And thank you for listening and thank you for watching. Have a good day.